Now that we have finished the layout, before we send the design out for fab, we must run design rule checks. DRCs are the only insurance that the PCB should go through fabrication and assembly without any issues. In particular, no shorts, no open nets, all the components are placed with enough clearance and traces are the proper width. So to run the design rule checker, I would recommend using the rules and violations panel. Open it and let's look at the list of rules. As you can see, there are a significant number listed. While we could run them all at once, it is much more effective to run each of the important ones individually. Scrolling down to the width constraint at the bottom, right click on it and select the run option. In the lower pane of the panel, we would see any errors listed. I normally run unrouted net constraints, solder mask expansion as two good examples which may affect board operation or the fabrication. Let's create a width error to show the reporting. This is an active error flag. Let's look at how to explore this active error. Hover over the offending segment and right click and select violations. This will list the rule or rules that are being flagged. Double clicking on the listed rule opens up the details. If this was not really an error, we could waive it. It would be better to adjust the rules to match what is needed. As you can see, this error now shows up as well in the rules and violations panel. Clicking on it will zoom into the offending object. Let's make this trace 25 mil. It is always a best practice to save these intermediate states to the workspace. Continuing with the minimum rules that I would recommend checking, I would recommend checking clearance constraints, component clearances, as well as the ones we've already checked earlier. I would encourage you to run any that you have concerns with at least once and verify that there's no significant issues. We can set the board origin using edit, origin, and set. We can place the origin anywhere we wish. Normally, I put it at the bottom left corner. With the DRCs run, we now turn our focus to creating the needed files for fabrication and assembly. Opening up the settings and then output job files, we can see there are three in our default project. Let's open up the fabrication out job and we see a window with a list of various file types on the left and output containers listed on the right where the selected files will be put into. The fabrication drawing will be a PDF file when it's created. Clicking on the fabrication files container changes the selected files. Here we see Gerber, NC Drill, ODB Plus, and the test point report files. Each of these would be generated and located in this folder. The Gerber file setup is accessed by double clicking on the entry, opening up the setup window. Ensure that you select the proper units and the needed number of digits for resolution. Click on the layer tab and check to see which layers will be generated. I normally use the used on option here. Following along the other tabs, we can set them as desired. Normally, the defaults are fine. Click OK to close the setup window. The NC drill file setup is next. Again, set these parameters as needed. Most of the time I use defaults. As this board does not have any test points, I'll uncheck this entry to avoid generating an unnecessary file. Just to note that while you can use the actual document name for the data source, it's also possible to point to the project's generic PCB board or schematics. Double-clicking on the PCB prints entry opens up a preview. There's not much to see in this design, as you can see. Looking at the validation output, we see a few listed. These would be part of the documentation for the design's verification reporting. Moving to the assembly out job, we can add additional entries by clicking on Add New, and the resulting menu with valid options for the category pops up. Here we are adding a draftsman document. At this point, we have set up all the needed output job files and should save the project up into the workspace. Now to generate Gerbers, for example, we click on the Generate button. This kicks off the process for the files. As the files are generated, they will open up in the main window, ending with the Camtastic document showing all the Gerber layers. Feel free to try these various out jobs and explore them to create the files you need. This completes the creation of the needed files for fabrication and assembly.